Hello loved ones from all over the world. We are proclaiming the, the blood of Jesus. We are proclaiming the name of Jesus. We are proclaiming that he is the savior of the world and he's the only savior of the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Samuel Kojiglanian. On one side, a cardiologist. On the other side, an evangelist solely by God's grace. And we are preaching the word of God. Blessed be his name. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 21. You got your Bibles, loved ones? Well, turn with me. Uh, on the other days, on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're on YouTube under Dr. Samuel Kojiglanian. That's my channel. And at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are studying the Word of God in the book of John. Oh, and on the other days, it's like Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're on CTN, Christian Television Network, from Fort Myers, Florida Channel. Okay, that's the southwest part of Florida. And uh, we're preaching the gospel. That's Revelation. So on Instagram, on these days, we study Samuel. On the other days, we study John. And on CTN, our Christian television network, our TV ministry has begun. We're studying the book of Revelation. So, oh, you get it all from Genesis to Revelation. So here we go, here we go, here we go, loved ones. Get your Bible. Let's go. We're going to hear the truth. We're going to hear it loud. We're going to hear it clear. Get your friends. And at the end, we will pray for you and for anxiety, for fear, and for all the sickness to go away in the name of Jesus Christ. So get your family, get your friends, and don't just keep it to yourself because that's the way you and I become stagnant. We got to share what God gives to us. Share, share, share. Yeah. Okay, so First Samuel chapter uh, 21, and we're, today we're going to study uh, verses 8 through 15. We're going to finish one we're going to finish the chapter. So what's happening here? Well, Samuel has anointed David to be the second king of Israel. Saul is now the king. He's all messed up. He is so messed up because he became like when you get on Vogue magazine, that brother's mind just changed, right? He's like, "Ooh, I am beautiful. Check my... Yeah, check me out. And he's making, he's got all kinds of money. He's got all kinds of people helping him. He's king. Everybody's like, oh, that's king. Well, he bought it. He bought into uh, his press releases. And he thought, yeah, I'm all that. And he, the spirit of God left him, right? So if the, he's all that, the spirit of God doesn't need to, spirit of God leaves. Evil spirits come. Evil spirits come into him and uh, he changes. He becomes angry, agitated. He becomes a vile person, hater. And he wants to take down David because David's getting more and more popular. After he killed Goliath, after David killed Goliath, oh, he's enraged, enraged. David has to run. David, he tried to kill David three times. He tried to kill his son, Jonathan. Uh, uh, Saul tried to kill his own son, Jonathan, because Jonathan and David were so close friends. And David's like, I got to go. So he goes to uh, this uh, man named Ahimelech, right? And that's the priest. He gets bread from him that only priests can eat. But because of the heart of the law, not the letter of the law, the heart of the law is forgiveness. The heart of the law is caring. The heart of the law is kindness. The heart of the law is Jesus Christ dying for you and me on the cross. That's the heart of the law. And so because of that, he gives it to David. He, say, he t t tells David that you can have this this bread if you and your men are clean and he gets it and so david gets the bread now we know in verse 7 we're in first samuel chapter 21 verse 7 we know in verse 7 there's this dude named doag not dog but um his name is doag the edomite and doag sees all this and he is a chief a farmer the chief herdsman uh, taking care of the cattle and the sheep of of saul this is not good. He'll come back to bite David. And you know David did lie saying, mm, I'm on an errand by the king and he has sent me and I can't say much. Uh, but I, I, I need bread. I, I need something. He's lying. Which is not good. He's going to regret it. And so in verse 8, David said to Ahimelech, the priest, And there's not here under your hand a spear or sword. Don't you have a spear or sword? I mean, this is David. He's the captain of the armies of Israel. He should have a spear. He should have a sword. He shouldn't look so disheveled. Why is he so disheveled? Because he's running away from Saul. Saul's about to kill him. 
And he says, for I have neither brought my sword uh, nor any weapons with me because the king's business required haste. I got to do this fast. He's lying again. This is the second time. Number two. He's lying again. He's like, I, I, I got to do it. I need a sword. I need something. Hello, everyone. Hello, all the loved ones that are on. God's blessings on you. May the Lord bless you and keep you ever so strong in the name of Jesus Christ. And the, the, the priest said, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you slew, David, uh, is you slew him in the valley of Elah. Behold, it is here. Wow. So they kept the sword of Goliath in Nob, where this high priest was, where the tabernacle was. And they kept it there. It's wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you would like to take it, take it. For there is no other save that is here. And David said, there is none like it. Give it to me. Now, y'all remember in 17, right? Uh, in chapter 17, David takes down Goliath, sling like that. And Goliath's like, whoa, this is not a headache. A leave ain't going to help this headache. No, no. Excedrin ain't going to help this headache. Uh, no, no. Uh, he's got a herniation of his brain that's going to just pop. And he just goes down and he dies right then and there or he's dying and David gets his sword and cuts his head off. That's Goliath. He's like a picture of Satan. And David here is a, like a picture of Christ who's taking down Satan, if you will. And that we found out in uh, chapter 17. In verse 50, he says, So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran. He stood upon the Philistine, I guess maybe one foot on the Philistine's back because the, the Philistine fe fell faceward, one on his back and took his sword he, and, and drew it out of the sheath. I mean, this guy's a teenager, and Goliath's sword is so heavy, he, he probably needed two hands and two arms and the, the, the force of his whole body. He drew it out of the sheet and slew him, cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that the, the champion was dead, they fled. Bye-bye. So they go. And so this is the sword that Ahimelech has now hidden. And I love what David said, there is none like it. First, I just want you to know there ain't nobody like our God. Ain't nobody, nobody like our God. Oh, well, let's look at it. And first of all, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Who other God created the heavens and the earth? Who? Nobody. Can't do it. Don't have the coordination. Don't got the wisdom. Don't got the eternity. Don't got the trinity. Only God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit can do such a thing. Look at, that was Genesis. Look at Exodus, yeah? Exodus, um, Pharaoh is messing with, um, he's messing with who? He's messing with Moses. And uh, the first plague has come with the blood. Now the second plague with the frogs. He's begging him to stop. Uh, I might let you go. No, 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 just stop it. Just stop it. And and what does uh, Moses say to Pharaoh in verse 10, Exodus 8, 10? And he said tomorrow, and he said, be it according to it, to your word. Like Pharaoh saying, hey, hey, I let you, I'll go tomorrow. And, and Moses said, well, be it as you said to me, that you may know that there is none like to the Lord our God. There ain't nobody. Mm, say what you want to say. Just go ahead, talk. Talk your trash talk. Give him the middle finger. Uh, ignore him. Do what you want to do. There's nobody like our God. Nobody. Y'all remember, we're in 1 Samuel, right? You remember where Samuel came from? He was non-existent. Hannah was the mama. She couldn't have babies. She prayed to the Lord. Lord gave her a son. She named him Samuel. What does she say? Oh. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 2, when she's praising the Lord and she's thanking him for giving her the son. What does she say? There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside you. Neither is there any rock like my God. None. There ain't nobody. Isaiah, y'all know I got to go to Isaiah, right? Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. What do we say? 
Well, let's find out. And um, by the way, now this is God talking about himself. Watch. It says, remember the former things of old, for I am God. He's, that's what he's saying. I'm God. And there is none else. I am God. And there is none like me. That's just beautiful. How about Psalm? Psalm 86, 8. Okay, fine. We'll just go there. Psalm 86, mostly written by David, but other people joined in like Korah and Asaph, even Moses got a Psalm, Psalm 90. And so we have uh, 86, 86, 86, 8. 86, 8. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. Neither are there any works like to your works. That's beautiful. I mean, that's just beautiful. It's just unreal that there is no God. No, David is talking about a sword. There is no sword like it. You know, the word of God is like a sword, right? In Ephesians chapter 6, when we talk about the armor, it's a two-edged sword. There is none like the word of God. Everybody else might have their little booklets. Everybody else might have their little deal. But this you cannot refute archaeologically, medically, historically, no matter how you go. You can't refute the Bible. You can refute other things, but you can't refute the Bible. It's undoable. You can't do it. And those who have tried have died. It's very simple. So, uh, uh, so let's go back to the word. So there's no God like our God. There is no word. The sword, what David said to Ahimelech, there is no sword like this. I, this I, give it to me. Well, there is no sword like our Bible. It's the greatest word ever written. There is no sword like it. And so you, you can go to Psalm 119, which happens to be the longest sword. And in verse 24, it says those words, that sword, they're my counselors. It's my counselors. And then in verse 50, it's like, look, if I, in my affliction, it was your word that picked me up. In Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What other book is a lamp to your feet? What other book is a lamp to my path? Uh, nothing. Nothing is only the book of God that is a lamp, that is a counselor, that will take you and me out of our affliction, out of our fears, out of our darkness, and set us on a rock. The rock is Jesus Christ. Only the word of God. That's it. That's it. Isaiah 55, this word, 55, 11, that goes forth, never will it be voided. Oh, there will be laws that will be voided. There will be people who will be voided. There will be athletes who will be voided. There will be statistics that will be voided. There will be politicians that will be voided. But the word of God, never. Never, 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 never. What did Jesus say when Satan come up with his ugly self and try to trick him three times, try to tempt him? The first one was like, hey, you see the rocks? I know you're hungry. 40 days, man, that's a long time, ain't it, though? This, I know you could turn those rocks into bread. Ain't you hungry? Mm, hungry. You smell the rocks turning into bread. I know you can do it. Jesus like, hey. The word of God says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. How are you going to live? Yes, bread, we need it to eat it. But the word, essential. We need this word. John 17, 17, Jesus Christ is praying for his disciples. He's about to go to Calvary, right? And what does he say? God, my father sanctify these disciples, sanctify the disciples who are listening now, sanctify the disciples who will listen later, sanctify them by your word. Your word is the truth. It's, you want truth? It's right here. There is no other truth. There is no other way. There is no other life. It's the word of God. So when he said this sword, there ain't none like it. This word, there ain't none like it. Our God, there ain't none like him. You can bank on that. Oh, in fact, you can bank your eternity on that. That's right. You and me both. Hallelujah! Woo! We just got started. Mm -hmm. Just getting started. There's none like it. And David arose and fled that day. 
for the fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. Now, the, the Philistines had five cities, major cities, right? And one of them was Gath. And, and that's where Goliath was from, Goliath of Gath. So uh, it's on the west side of Israel, uh, where it's close to the Mediterranean Sea. On the other side, on the east side, is the Jordan River. And so David goes to enemy territory. Ooh. He's not supposed to be there. And he goes there without asking God. This is the other mistake. See, lies lead to mistakes. Fear leads to mistakes. When people got you scared about things, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, you better do this, you better do that, <laughs> leads to mistakes. No fear. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get there. Yeah, so he goes to Gath, right? Now, you're going to find in uh, when we ultimately <laughs> get to chapter 27, David will go back to this king. And they'll be buddy buddies. But right here, no buddy buddies. So he goes to Achish. He goes to, he goes to um, enemy territory because he's trying to hide because Saul's going to chase him wherever he goes in Israel. But he won't chase him to Achish. So his mindset is like, I better go to enemy territory. I better hide there because Saul's about to kill me. Uh, and he's not thinking straight. He, he's disheveled. His mind is not on Christ. You will keep in perfect peace. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect peace. He whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Right here, despite David being so beautiful, a man after God's own heart, he's not trusting God here. And his mind is not on God because he did not ask God. Loved one, I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you have a decision to make. And you're like, should I do this? Should I do this? People are like, well, if I were you, I'd do this. Uh, excuse me, they're not you. So you have to shut them down. Scoop. Shut your mouth. Now, you have to, whoever says, if I were you, I'd do it. No, they ain't you. And, and you're like, well, I flip a coin. Well, that's 50-50. You can go wrong, you can go right. Or you can trust God and say, Father, I am lost. I need your help. I need your direction." We just read Psalm 119, 105 is, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Papa, I need you to shine your light on my path. I need to make the right choice. I want your will and not mine. Go his way. Go his way, loved one. No matter what it is, go his way. Because it's going to be the right way. Even if it's the painful way, it's going to be the right way. Go his way. Go his way. So that David, see, he, he's, he needs a sling faith, sling-like faith. You know what that is? I, I just made that up. A sling-like faith is when he used his sling to take down Goliath. That was faith. Now he wants a sword of Goliath, not faith. Go with a sling like faith. Trust God. He gonna carry you. He gonna carry you. Uh, you know, it's in Second uh, Corinthians. Where is it? Second Corinthians um, five seven. Second Corinthians five seven. That we walk by faith, not by sight. Right here, unfortunately, David is walking by sight and not by faith. And dare I say, you and I, a lot of times in our life, walk by sight and not by faith. Yet God is telling you in Second Corinthians and me five seven, walk by. faith faith and not by sight. And right now, I think you and I got to repent. Lord God, we've been walking by sight. We've been seeing and hearing things and, and we're scared and this is going to happen and it's going to happen again and, and, and funguses and viruses and bacteria and all kinds of wickedness are coming your way and, and you better get ready or you're going to go down. And, and, and that's, that's what we hear and see. And... Calm. Jump into a sling like faith. My God is with me. What are you saying? My God is with me. You come with a sword and spear. I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk by faith, not by sight. Make a big difference in your life. Big difference. You know, if you go to Hebrews 
uh, Hebrews 11, 1 is faith is being sure. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we have not seen. We haven't seen it, but our faith takes us there. It'll take us there. And that's what we need to do. We need to go there by faith. I'm, I'm going to turn there real quick because I know there's some good verses in Good. All is good. But uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, I just went through 11. 1. How about verse 32? Watch this. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell you. I mean, uh, I believe it's Paul writing this, but he's like, I, I, I can't I can't get everybody in the Bible here. How about Gideon and Barak and Samson? And, and, and how about um, David also and Samuel? And all the prophets, okay, now he just mentioned Samuel in verse 34, uh, quench the violence. They quench the fi violence of fires. They escape the edge of the sword out of the weakness where they made strong. They were valiant in flight, turned to fight the armies of aliens. I mean, this is this is the, the, the people that God has used, including David in and, and 39. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, faith. They received not like promise. They haven't yet seen the, uh, eternity. They haven't yet seen what God has promised. And you may not have seen what God has yet promised, but he wants you and me to walk in faith. And that faith is the bridge that will take us to where he needs us to be. Not by sight, but by faith. But by faith. But by faith. And David rose and fled on that day to Achish, the king of Gath, he's in the Philistine area, in the wrong area to be. And the servants of Achish said to him, so the servants of Achish, the king in Gath, in Philistine, the enemy, are saying to the king, going, uh, this is David, the king uh, uh, of the land. Uh, and did did they not sing one another about him and, and make dances about him? Remember, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his 10,000. This, this is him. This is he, He's right here. And uh, David is 10,000, and in verse 12, And David lay, laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish the king of Gath. Now, Achish the king of Gath may have been five foot six or five foot seven. David is scared of him. Why, Goliath was nine foot nine. And he's like, well, what? Sword and You better shut up. I'm coming at you hard. You're going down, and your whole army's going down. And this is one king, I don't know what he is, five foot four, five foot six, five foot eight. Let's just say he's six. I doubt it. Uh, and he's scared of him. Why? Because he's walking by sight and not by faith. That's the problem that David's got going up in here. And, and he then changed his behavior. And, and, and he feigned himself mad. Uh, not like I'm angry mad. Uh, like a lunatic. And he's like, ah! He started acting like he was in a psych war. Like he was like, need a big dose of Ativan and fentanyl and Versed. So he could calm down. And, and and in their hands, and he, he scrambled at the door. I mean, he's scratching at the doors, and he's acting like a madman, and, and he's got all his spittle down his beard. Uh, we by now, now we know he got a beard. Um, he All all the snits coming down, all saliva. <laughs> he's all crazy. He's going crazy. He's going mad. He's not, really. He's acting mad so they won't harm him because he now knows he's in the hands of the enemy and he should have never been there. Then said Achish to his servants, Lo, you see this madman? Why have you brought him to me? I, this is not making sense. Okay, back then, nobody got Instagram or Facebook or whatever, right? Twitter, X. They don't have it. They can't recognize him. They don't... They don't know. I mean, I guess the Philistines from the hill saw David and he was a teenager. Now he's grown to be a man and he looks like David. And isn't he David? And David used to fight against the Philistines and he was taking the Philistines down and, and he was taking the Philistines down. And so they, the soldiers did get to see him. A lot of them died, but some of them who escaped see him and they're like, um, it's, uh, that's David, that's David. Ake is like, that brother got spit on his beard. 
He's scratching on my doors? I just painted them doors. He's scratching my door. Get this boy out of here. And then said Achish to his servants, Lo, you see this man? Why did you bring him in? Have I need of this madman? Do I? I don't need this boy. Uh, uh, that you have brought this fellow to play mad in my presence? I don't need no entertainment. I don't need no bad man. This is, this is stupid. Shall this fellow come into my house? Get him out! Basically. And that ends basically the chapter 21. So what happens when we fear? Yeah, what happens? What, what, what does fear do? I mean, it makes you run. David was running. It makes you lie. Now, at times, a bear chasing you or bad people chasing you, you got to run. I get it. But it makes you lie here. David lied. It made him a madman. He had to act mad. And it made him make mistakes. That's what fear does. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and a spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind, not a mad mind, but a sound mind and power like taking down Goliath, not getting scared of King Achish, who keeps broadcasting his news across the world, not Achish, but Goliath going down, everybody that's wrong going down, spirit of love, we don't do things in anger, we don't do things in uh, hurt and we walk in love, yeah. Isaiah 43, 1, I'll go there, and um, Isaiah 43, 1, and it was uh, God talking to Jacob, uh, God talking to Israel, he's like, don't fear, you don't, there's no need to fear, he says, when you pass through the waters, I'm going to be with you, and, and, and through the rivers, they're not going to overflow on your head, when you walk through the fire, you're not going to be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you, see, that's life. Water trying to drown you, news trying to drown you, fire trying to drown you, family trying to drown you, uh, all kinds of businesses trying to drown you, uh, mortgages, uh, uh, paying the, the, the rent for the, the month in an apartment complex, the food, everything is overwhelmed. It's not going to drown you, nor are you going to die, nor are you going down with this. You're going to stand on Jesus Christ because he gave you the power to stand in power, and love, and in a sound mind, because you are going to trust in Him. Psalm 46, one. Psalm 46.1. God is a very present help. Now, a very present help. You're like, what, what's going to happen? God is a very present, not a very absent, not a very distant, not a very angry, but a very present help in times of trouble. Isn't that beautiful? I'll read it for you. Psalm 46, 1. And it says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. I'll leave you with this. John 14, 27. Since we're studying John on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. i leave you with this. My peace I leave with you, Jesus said. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. That's a choice you and I make. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Why? Because he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of sound mind. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you don't have Jesus Christ, come as you are. Just come as you are. You may be in the land of Achish in Gath in the Philistine region. You may be hiding in a cave. You may be running around mad like Saul. Uh, you may be have made it on top of the hill. Wherever you may be, no matter where you are, come as you are and come to the cross of Calvary where Jesus Christ died for you and me. Come as you are and say, I am one messed up soul and I need one beautiful Savior the only Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross just for me. I come as I am, but I surely am not going to leave as I was because the blood right now, as I accept it, has cleansed me. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And I believe in my heart right now that the Holy Spirit's coming to me. And I will make a choice to walk with the Lord all the days of my life and to be in His Word 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. No matter where you go, you and I, we're not going to walk in fear. We're going to walk in the Lord, in the spirit of power, in the spirit of love, and in the spirit of a sound mind. Why? Because we have a Lord who is a very present help. Our Lord is a very present help in times of trouble. Blessed be his name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.